the Rubico already was an outstanding sniper rifle. And the Prime simply adds the cherry on top. It's superior in almost every single aspect. Hey guys, hello and welcome back. As always, my name is Lazar, and today we're gonna be diving deeper into this mastery rank 12 primary weapon, the Rubico Prime. I'm gonna be covering ordinary everyday gameplay builds, stuff that you would take on into a normal mission. But of course, we also have an idle launch setup, and I'm gonna be giving you details on how exactly to build a sniper rifle depending on your warframe, buffs, etc. etc. That being said though, please keep in mind that my builds and guides follow a new player friendly approach. Simply because there's a lot of info here and I want anybody watching to understand how the weapon functions and how it should be built. So if you're a veteran of the game and already know most of this stuff, you can skip ahead or have a bit of patience. And with that out of the way, let's jump into the Rubico Prime. Let's begin by having a look at how the weapon behaves without any mods equipped and for that I'm gonna be taking a couple of free shots. You'll notice that a couple of things have changed from the standard version of the Rubico. First of all, we have new graphics on the scope and this is a tad subjective. To be honest, I don't really care that much as I turn off sniper scopes from options and I'm gonna show you that a tad later, especially for Eidolon hunts. The scope bonuses have not changed, level 1 will grant you 35% critical damage and level 2 will grant you 50% critical damage, however what has changed is the value of the zoom itself. Level 1 is no longer 3.5 and level 2 used to be 6.0x. Now this is a tad subjective, some players enjoy having a smaller zoom on their scope, however I enjoyed the old one a whole lot more. And that's pretty much it, also the targeting reticule is a tad bigger so it makes it easier to land precise shots. Let's jump into stats to see precisely what we're dealing with. Mod capacity 60 out of 60, if your Rubico Prime has 30 out of 30, you should know this by now, but swap in an Orokian Catalyst. This one can be found from alerts, invasions, or if you're lucky, from the daily sortie. Next, my weapon has been format a total of 7 times, but this was done because I have a whole bunch of ribbons and mod combinations to test. For the weapon builds, I'm recommending you guys 4 forma is more than sufficient, even with a ribbon. The accuracy is 13.3, but this refers to the non-scoped accuracy. There will come times in ordinary everyday missions when you're forced to use your sniper rifle as a shotgun and you can't scope in because of the distance between you and your target. Critical chance is 38% and this is where the Rubico saw a huge increase when it came to the Prime version. 8% more base critical chance and you might say, hey man, that's not really all that much, but this is base critical chance. So all of your critical chance increases from mods will be based on this. Critical multiplier 3.0x, which is the same as the standard version, standard falloff as well. Fire rate also saw an increase from 2.67 to 3.67, unfortunately same magazine size. The reload also got a bit of a buff down to 2.0 seconds from 2.4 seconds and the same 1 meter worth of punch through. Riven disposition 3 out of 5, fortunately they have not nerfed this one just yet. Status chance also saw a buff up to 16%, but to be honest this doesn't really matter all that much. You don't really build a sniper rifle for status and status procs. The damage has remained the same when it comes to the actual layout, it did receive a massive buff of 4%, so there you go. In any case, let's start slapping on some mods starting with mandatory mods, serration 165% extra damage. What about heavy caliber? This is always such a touchy feely kind of discussion, but the point here is I don't recommend heavy caliber when it comes to sniper rifles. However, when it comes to Eidolon hunting, if you're getting really close to the joint, that minus accuracy won't really matter all that much, especially for the knee sections. But as a general rule of thumb, I do not recommend heavy caliber on sniper rifles. Next, we're gonna go to multi-shot, the best thing on mostly everything, split chamber 90% and vigilante armament 60%, totaling 150%. That means that with each and every shot, you got a guaranteed second bullet and a 50% chance at a third bullet. Plus the benefit of the set. Now don't get me wrong, that 5% chance to enhance critical hits isn't the biggest deal in the world, but it is nice to have. Speaking of critical chance, point strike 150% critical chance and this is where that 8% extra comes into play. The standard version of the Rubico would go to 75% critical chance with point strike, while this one goes to 95%, so you see it does matter a whole lot. And of course critical damage with vital sense bumping up the multi to 6.6x. Next it really depends what you're gonna do with the weapon. Initially we're gonna be showcasing a normal everyday gameplay build. 
Elemental damage should always be applied on a weapon depending on circumstances. Where are you going? Who are you fighting? I don't recommend you use the Rubico against the infested. There's a horde of them, so look into AoE weapons heavily modded into heat. When it comes to Corpus faction, they have big shields, and against shields you can build magnetic damage, but a smarter idea is to build gas or toxin, which will bypass their shields entirely and deal damage to their health. If you're talking about the Grenier, these are the toughest targets in Warframe, at least the toughest targets that you meet in ordinary everyday missions. Against Grenier, you gotta take into account the armor type they have, alloy, which is weak to radiation. Incidentally, Eidolon joints also have alloy armor and ferrite. Ferrite is weak to corrosive and once again alloy is weak to radiation. Your best option more often than not against Grenier is to build corrosive, which is the elemental combo between electricity and toxin. Should I go for the 90 mods or for the 60? 60, 60 mods. Again, this is a sniper rifle. We're not gonna play around with statuses. We're simply gonna destroy our targets. So go for the biggest wallop of damage you can with the 90 mods. Stormbringer for electricity, as for toxin, is going to be infected clip. And we made 2228 corrosive on the weapon. I'm not really interested where it stands in the stat proc priority. All I want is a big wallop worth of damage. And I still have one more mod slot left on the weapon. Normally this is what I like to call the option slot, but there are a couple of clear cut winners for the last slot. Here comes a meme mod, please don't yell at me. Hammer shot, yes I know this one is not a very popular mod, simply because the stats on it aren't as high as, uh, well, to make it competitive. It, it was 60% critical damage and 60% status chance, it would be a whole lot more powerful. But in the case of the Rubico Prime, you can use this one to great effect only because of the critical damage. 60% critical damage for a crit chance, crit damage weapon is absolutely huge. You'll see the multiplier goes to 8.4x. Now that is a option, but you do have one option which is simply flat out better from all points of view. Again, for ordinary everyday missions, bladed rounds, if you don't have this one from the Acolyte event, then you can pay 10 plat from the trade chat. On kill effect, 120% critical damage when aiming for 9 seconds, which is the exact same amount as Vital Sense. That means that my crit multi will be going to 9.9x with the buff from bladed rounds. And this is a well-rounded, ordinary everyday setup, so let's test it to see what kind of a kick does the Rubico Prime have. Let's respawn the exact same targets and I'm also gonna be unpausing the AI. Just to make sure you guys don't dream up multipliers and all that. Now. As you can see, the more my combo counter goes up, the more damage I do. And of course, now I have the buff from bladed rounds as well. And the Rubico Prime can deal a truck and a half worth of damage. And of course, that glorious punch through is working quite nicely. One meter worth of punch through is not the biggest deal in the world. But as you can see, in certain situations, it does work quite nicely and the orange crit was a crit up from um, Vigilante armament. This is a beast of a weapon, it was powerful before and it retained one of the biggest pluses to the Rubico Prime, the recoil. This weapon doesn't really have that much recoil on it which is a huge deal because it makes it easy to use, easy to hit idle on joints and so on and so forth. It's a beautiful weapon, it's easy to use, unfortunately now you gotta be mastery rank 12 in order to use it. That's enough for that, but what about hunter munitions? Every single bloody primary weapon that has a high critical chance or a decent critical chance is viable for hunter munitions. We're gonna be dropping bladed rounds and using hunter munitions. 30% chance to apply a slash status on an enemy on critical hits. Now, this is a critical weapon, so I will be getting some slashes out of hunter munitions. Just keep in mind that I'm not putting a lot of bullets into my targets before they die. Now, when building a weapon for a slash, it's a smart idea to build viral damage because it reduces the maximum health of your target to 50% on a status proc. Unfortunately, as you will see, I'm not really gonna be getting all that many status procs on my target. I'm gonna use cry rounds with infected clip, got viral on the weapon, let's test it out like this. Spawning in once again the exact target says before, oh there you go, where? I kinda lost this guy earlier. There we go, we got slash 14,045, that is a huge amount of slash, but where is the viral block? Let's see. There we go, we got slash, again, pretty big numbers, more slash on the target, absolutely annihilating it, but still no viral. You see my problem, with a weapon such as this and a viral setup, it's simply not reliable enough to use. Let's write some more. Come on, give viral block. 
If the stars align and you get a viral proc together with a slash, that is gonna be absolutely bloody beautiful, but your targets will be dying more often than not before you see any viral proc at all. So for this reason, if you must have hunter munitions on a weapon such as this for whatever reason, then I would recommend you simply build the elemental combo that your target is weak to. In my case, it's going to be corrosive and let's give it a quick spin like this as well. Same targets, no pause the AI. Oh my god, that slash 21,000, absolutely bloody beautiful. And I got a corrosive proc on the target, believe it or not. That could amount to a viral proc as well. As you can see, the Rubico Prime can absolutely shred with hunter munitions. Yes, you are getting plenty of slash. Do you need it? Nope, you don't. You can simply murder your target without any slashes at all. But hunter munitions, as always, is a bloody viable option. You freaking fool. So there you go, that's enough for standard builds. What we're gonna be doing next is going to a Riven setup. I got a few Rivens for this one, two Acricons and a Sati Acricon. The one I'm gonna be showcasing is gonna be this one, critical chance, critical damage, minus damage to Corpus. Now that negative I don't really care about. I don't own an actual Rubico Riven. These are loaned to me by you guys so I can test and give the results back to you. So thank you very much guys, I really appreciate it. This is a pretty standard corrosive setup with bladed rounds and the Riven took the spot of Vigilante armament. So let's see what it can do. 160 something percent critical chance with a multiplier of over 11. Now that is something to behold. <laughs> oh look at those numbers. I just love the orange numbers. Currently Rubico Rivens have gotten extremely expensive. Before the Rubico Prime was announced, Rubico Rivens unrolled would go for 300 plat. I sold mine for 300 plat. And now they're going for 900 on roll, simply because this weapon is an absolute monster. Not only does it deal a truck and a half worth of damage, but it's so easy to use. So I do highly recommend it. That's gonna be it for ordinary everyday missions. So let's talk about Eidolons, because once again, this is the primary use when it comes to sniper rifles. Now we do have a couple of mandatory mods. Vital Sense, Point Strike, Split Chamber, Stormbringer and Hellfire. Vigilante armaments is not 100% mandatory, but more often than not, it will find its way onto Eidolon setup, simply because you can't you really use on kill effects. What about Argon Scope? You didn't talk about that one at all. Well, in standard setups with 160 something critical chance, I'd rather go for critical damage instead of critical chance. When it comes to Eidolon hunts, you can proc it if you hit the head of the Eidolon and then refocus to the joint. Is it a smart idea? Well, it's gonna depend on your own setup. For me, my setup is way too fast to first hit the head, then hit the joint. I gotta really focus on the joints most of the time. But you can use it if you so desire. I'm not recommending it, but it is usable. Bladed rounds, not at all. This is an on-kill effect and you don't really get that many kills when you're fighting the big Eidolon. Serration is not 100% mandatory. It's really gonna depend on Chroma. I gotta tackle Chroma simply because he's currently very popular when it comes to Eidolon hunting. Chroma has Vex Armor buff grants the same type of benefit as Serration. Let's take a look at Chroma just for a quick second. I know a lot of you guys play it, so there you go. I tried it myself, I don't like the gameplay, sorry. This is gonna be a standard Selfish 965 Chroma build, and if we take a look at abilities, you will see that it does stipulate under Vex Armor weapon damage increase 957%. Again, treat this one as a Serration. There comes a point, with that in mind, that adding more elemental damage to the weapon will do a whole lot more than simply adding serration. So I can drop serration and add prime cryo rounds. And again, all of my elementals on the weapon will be getting buffed by that 957% for chroma. Keep in mind that what I'm telling you now only applies to that type of build for chroma. Why cold, however? Why didn't we slap on something else or make blast and so on and so forth? The primary reason we're using prime cryo rounds, one, because it is prime, so it's 165%, we're talking damage amount, and second, it's cold, and cold does have a 25% damage bonus against Eidolon joints. The only reason we're building radiation in the first place is because it also has a bonus, but radiation has 75% extra. So if you're going with chroma, you're looking at something like this. And your final mod slot, you have a bit of an option, but my recommendation would be to go for Wildfire. As long as you don't have a Riven, Wildfire will get you 60% heat. If this wasn't Chroma, we could talk about ha Hammer Shot as well. But that heat will get combined into the radiation, and again, here comes Chroma's buff to increase everything by 957%. If you do not have a Riven for the Rubico Prime, 
want to run your selfish chroma you're looking at a build such as this there is another question if i don't have prime cryo rounds and i just have the normal version is it still better to use the serration yes 100 percent. it's not gonna be as huge of an increase as with the prime version but it's still worth using over serration just to give you kind of like a rough understanding of this if i am to swap out serration for prime cryo rounds in a normal everyday build for Eidolon hunting on Chroma, 957 Chroma, then I'm going to be getting about 22-23% extra damage. So bear that one in mind. But enough about Chroma and his deviation. For everybody else, we're going to be using, of course, Serration. As for your final mod slot, you can use, once again, Wildfire. But in the case of the Rubico Prime, you have a better option. That was the best option for Chroma because, once again, of his Vex Armor buff and how it functions. But for other Warframes, Rhino, Trinity, Harrow, and so on and so forth. I would recommend you look into Hammer Shot. 60% critical damage. The status chance is completely irrelevant in this case. Once again, Eidolons are immune to status effects, but the critical damage is what we're after here. So you do have an option, Hammer Shot, which is better, again, as long as you're not Chroma or Wildfire. Choice, as always, is yours. Now, of course, I also have some footage regarding how the Rubico Prime performs in an actual Eidolon hunt, but you're going to be seeing Chroma in this setup because, again, I was trying to pull out as much damage as I could. You're going to be looking at a setup with Prime Cryo Rounds and this Acrocon right here. The same I showcased earlier, critical chance and critical damage. Now let's see what the Rubico Prime can do in an actual gameplay scenario. This is footage from my streams. Yeah, these good boys, these very good uh, in this moment. That's just, that's just so good. Destroyed. Wrecked. Destroyed. Nice and easy. Looking at it. Done. Energy spike. I advise all in done. Got it. I advise all in back. Energy Got it. I advise all in back. So, what did you think? Pretty good, isn't it? Yes, the Rubico Prime is fully capable of tearing through Eidolons like there's no tomorrow. But before we draw our conclusions, let's have a quick chat regarding Arcane, since I forgot. Now, these are not 100% mandatory, but they will make your life a whole lot easier, and they're also super cheap. My go-to setup is Arcane Momentum together with Arcane Acceleration. Arcane Momentum on critical hit, 40% chance for plus 100% reload speed to sniper rifles for 8 seconds. Now, the reload speed of the Rubico Prime is a lot better than the standard version, 2.0 seconds, but it's still not enough to rapid fire it like you would the Vectus Prime, for example. And normally, the 5 shots within the Rubico's clip are more than enough to fully destroy a joint or the Eidolon itself, but for all those times that you miss or you get blocked by a tree or by a lure, then Arcane Momentum is gonna help you out greatly, reducing the reload time. As for Arcane Acceleration, this is strictly for Burst. It does a whole lot more on the Vectus Prime than it does on the Rubico Prime, but again, if you want a bit more Burst, go for Arcane Acceleration. Another option would be Avenger. Avenger offers a 30% critical chance bonus additive after, so it's 
pretty huge. If you want more crit, you can go for Avenger. And for normal, everyday missions, I would recommend you look into Rage. This one on headshot, 10% chance for plus 120% damage rifles for 16 seconds. This one would kind of come in useful in the last phase of an Eidolon fight, but as you saw there, they simply get deleted like that, at least with my setup. They don't live more than 2 to 3 seconds, so there is that. Whew, that was a long one. Thank you guys so much for bearing with me. As for my conclusions to the Rubico Prime, this is a fantastic weapon and I highly recommend it not only for Eidolon fights, but also for average everyday missions. If you're bored of your Amprax, your Ignis Ray, or your Ang Arca Plasmore. I know a lot of you guys are wondering, listen, Lanka, Rubico Prime or Vectis Prime, which is the best sniper rifle when it comes to farming Eidolons, and all of these three will give fantastic results in Eidolon hunting. And I can't exactly speak to everybody's preference, but what I can do is give you my top three, and it's gonna be Vectis Prime, Rubico Prime and the Lanka. Yes, it's true, while the Lanka is fully capable of dealing the most amount of damage with a single shot, it's also by far the slowest and clunkiest of them all, and I simply do not enjoy that gameplay style. I prefer the rapid fire of the Vectis Prime. One last thing I owed you guys, the explanation regarding the sniper scope. As you saw, I didn't have an actual sniper scope. You go into options, interface, and you simply uncheck this little checkbox here. During Eidolon fights, for whatever godforsaken reason, we are battered and bruised by all sorts of neon effects. So if you want to clear up the screen just a little bit and make aiming a tad easier, you can simply deactivate the sniper scope. And that's gonna do it for the review. As always, my name is Blazar. Thank you guys so much for watching. Like, favorite, share, and subscribe if you enjoyed the content. If you have any feedback for me or would like to request a specific weapon review, then by all means, leave it in the comment section down below. Now, I can't exactly promise you that it'll be done by next time or even within a week because these reviews do take quite a bit of time to make. But what I can promise you that I will be reading through each and every comment. But you can also find me on Twitch, Facebook, Twitter, all the usual places. Until next time, guys. Bye-bye.